And then I read the script, and I thought the first act really terrified me. But by the times we got to act two and three uh, in the in the script, I was like, well, he's really taking us on an adventure that is quite exciting. It's 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 he's going in. I call him. I call Tom Gormick in, in this production the mind because it really is his fantasy, if you will, you know, uh, culminating from whatever the perception has been in the media, the internet, um, you know, whatever blips in my life that have occurred that have gone public as, as a result of being in the public eye, and some sense of knowledge of my interviews and the things that interested me in this path. And um, that, that spoke to me, and it was like a fantasy, a fantasy of Tom Cormican's interpretation of what my life would be like. It's completely fictional. It, it is not me. Um, there's, some, there's some elements that, that are truthful, but, but it is a fictionalized, surrealistic, abstract, comical account of a week in, and I hate saying my name like this, but Nicolas Cage's life. <laughs> Tom and I had worked on a show together, and the show ended, and he said, I have a kernel, I have an idea, a kernel of an idea, and the, you know, the, the premise of like Nick Cage playing Nick Cage, and I was like, as soon as he said it, I remember where I was, we were walking around a lot, and I was like, I'm in. I, yes, absolutely, 100%, let's do it. So as soon as that ended, we, we basically just started taking walks and hikes and fleshing out the story and the tell. Nick calls us the mind, like calls me the mind and calls Kevin the penultimate mind because he was like, he was a, uh, we tend to analyze and potentially overthink things. And I think what was interesting is so does Nick. And so when we come up, he'd know he was about to engage in like sort of an intellectualization of the scene, which, you know, when you're directing, you want to talk more about how it's, how it's feeling or, you know, or, or what we can do to make it better. And so he would be smiling when he said that. And he was like, oh God, they want me to say some more words. You know, and he would be thinking about it and he'd be like, here comes the mind. What are you thinking about? What now? And you know, what, was, what we found was that we were always interested in making it better and so was Nick. And I think he found a way to sort of have fun with that, with both of us. The guy did not drop a single line. He never flubbed a line. He, we had a table read, you know, a week before the shoot and he was completely off book, and he had so much dialogue. Um, it was like he had, and he had, he had worked out so much of you know what he wanted to do, or he always had a take on the scene. Oh, trampolines and trombones! Did I smash your dad's car? <laughs> Sorry, dude. There was no movie without Nicolas Cage being on board, that is for sure. And then, you know, it was about finding the correct uh, Javi, you know, finding, uh, and, and, you know, when we met Pedro Pascal, he came and he said, I, you know, I, he hasn't really done much comedy before, but he was like, I'm a huge Nicolas Cage fan. And so there was so much of the Javi character in Pedro that it was sort of undeniable. We had to, we had to, and I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of his. And um, the characters that he plays or has played in the past uh, seem to be the sort of macho, like, you know, action-driven characters. They're real, like, men. And uh, seeing him sort of be a, be a giant super fan and sweetly talk about what Nick has meant to him uh, started to really solidify for us exactly who the Javi character would be. I also want to offer that I had a great cast. I, I really enjoyed working with Pedro. You, you couldn't work with a nicer man. And 
And I thought he brought something quite amusing to the character. Pedro, as Javi, has a, uh, a very unique sense of humor. <laughs> he would, he would, he would make jokes about cabbage uh, lettuce patches in, in the field in, in Budapest. And I'm like, is that really your version of comedy? <laughs> your, your humor? And it's just, it is funny because it's, no one finds it funny. And, but his character, he was, I think he was a little method and he was playing a character that would find that amusing. Hope you enjoyed this behind the scenes look at the, bear, the unbearable weight of massive talent. This film being a meta for uh, Nicolas Cage, I highly recommend you checking this out and I hope you learned a lot with even the wild walls coming out of the bathroom. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you here next time. Later!